Welcome, I'm Dula Koa, and you're listening to Dear Diaspora. Dear Diaspora exists to host Africa-centered conversations about all things business, culture, and more. Join me and guests as we ask the big questions, challenge narratives surrounding Africa, learn and unlearn, and explore what a more connected, collaborative, and engaged African diaspora can look like. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Dear Diaspora. This week's episode is going to be all about my experiences living and working in Accra, Ghana. I was there for three months earlier this year, wrapping up my fellowship through the Princeton and Africa program and had a phenomenal time. Accra was everything I expected it to be and more. I was at the beach almost every Sunday. I went surfing for the first time. I got to travel outside of Accra and see more of the country. I went to Busia, um, I went to like Moli National Park, spent a, a little bit of time in Takrade. So just overall like a really great experience, amazing food and nightlife. And I even got to connect with a few entrepreneurs who are building amazing businesses, some um, that will be actually joining me for conversations uh, later on, so stay tuned for that. Interesting enough, I've been to Ghana twice. The first time was in December of 2021, and that was purely for just entertainment and enjoyment purposes. Um, That was a trip I had booked in 2020, but then of course 2020 happened and I had to push it. So got to go in December last year and then also got to spend April through July of this year in Accra, Ghana, wrapping up my fellowship. Before diving into my experiences in Ghana, I thought it would be just interesting to share how Ghana has essentially, like over the last decade, been able to position itself as the gateway to Africa. For decades now, Ghana has been leading the charge in innovation and development. If you don't know anything about Ghana, it was the first sub-Saharan African country to shake off colonial rule and Ghana gaining independence in 1957 really served as an inspiration for a lot of liberation struggles across the continent and actually even here in the U.S. Ghana's economy has generally experienced faster growth relative to sub-Saharan Africa, and Ghana actually attained middle income status in 2007 when the per capita GDP was a thousand US dollars, which is quite impressive to think about. A lot of Ghana's growth has been fueled by gold, cocoa, and oil exports. And the country's growth rate actually reached its peak of 15% in 2011 when oil production commenced, making it one of the fastest growing economies that year. Over the last 10 years or so, Ghana's also done a really good job positioning itself as the gateway to Africa. In 2014, the Diaspora Affairs Bureau within Ghana's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration was launched. So this was a super significant achievement on part of the government of Ghana because it essentially officially formalized the engagement of the Ghanaian diaspora for effective migration management and national development planning. Fast forward to 2019, the year of return happens. The year of return was a major landmark spiritual and birthright journey, inviting the global African family home and abroad to mark 400 years of the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in Jamestown, Virginia. Interesting enough, the year of return was almost decades in the making. It built on Ghana's 2002 Citizenship Act and Right to Abode, which was a set of laws that aimed to grant ease of travel, residency, and citizenship to Africans of the diaspora. So in a sense, 
Ghana has just consistently over the years been able to make itself just more attractive to tourism, investment. I think it's done a really great job because it's 2022. Everyone's still talking about Ghana. A lot of eyes continue to be on Ghana, you know, even three years after the big year of return campaign. So to say that Ghana, Accra especially, has become one of the world's most influential cultural and tourism hubs would be an understatement. I recently watched the Good Morning America special covering the Global Citizen Festival, which took place in Accra, Ghana, and there was a woman in the video. She was a returnee, I believe, and she said that she feels as though she's in the middle of a renaissance. And that really stuck with me um, because, yes, there has been this global renaissance of pan-Africanism and a rebirth, really, of a desire to connect with the continent. This renaissance certainly played a role in my decision to launch Dear Diaspora, and I think it's really interesting to think there is this one YouTube video I watched, um, I think it was The Grapevine, and someone said, Africa just needs really good PR. And I was like, that is so true. So much about what we think about Africa or any place in the world is obviously shaped by what we consume, you know, through the media, what we listen to, what we watch. And so just like the U.S. for, you know, maybe centuries now has positioned itself as like this land of you know, milk and honey and opportunity. And regardless of your background, you can you can make it. Just work hard, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and you'll be good. Despite all of the systemic injustices and the inequality that exists in the United States, America has still projected that to the world through the media. So what's interesting to me is Africans or African countries and specifically Ghana in this case being able to do the same thing and say like okay we are this thriving growing cultural pan-African hub that is your gateway to Africa Um, you know come here you're gonna have a great time you're gonna meet amazing people we're super welcoming and friendly you are gonna be able to build something here if you want to. You can, you know, have a house here if you want to. But one thing I've been thinking about is, you know, as we celebrate this renaissance and applaud the efforts of those, you know, really rebranding Ghana, um, I think it's really important for us to be mindful of how these efforts benefit the average Ghanaian, considering Ghana is one of the most expensive places to live in the world. Ghana's capital city specifically, Accra, is the second most expensive city in the world in terms of property price to income ratio. And that's according to a recent survey by Numbio. So what that means is essentially um, in Accra's city center, the acquisition price per square meter for a new apartment is an average of $1,750. That Numbio report goes on to explain that Accra has the most expensive prices for new property acquisitions, and it ranks ahead of Lagos, Nigeria, Johannesburg, South Africa, and Cairo, Egypt. To put things into perspective, this puts Accra ahead of Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Moscow, and Paris on the global scale. And I can certainly attest to this because for the three months I stayed in Accra, I was in the very bougie East Lagoon area and was paying $1,400 a month for my apartment. 
I had a roommate, thankfully, but still it was super expensive. And just for like comparison, both of the apartments that I've rented alone here in the United States, I've never paid more than $800 for. So to be paying the same amount, you know, while splitting rent in Ghana um, was a bit ridiculous to me. Um, Accra is very expensive. And this obviously isn't to take away from all like the city has to offer. But I think it's just important information to share and keep in mind, especially for folks who are interested in visiting Ghana, doing business in Ghana. It's very expensive to live in Accra. Inflation is really bad, um, just like it is in many parts of the world right now. And the CD is not doing well. It was recently deemed the world's worst performing currency. When I was there in December of 2021, the exchange rate was $1 to 6 CDs. And now it's $1 to 13.6 CDs, almost 14 CDs. And this is being recorded in October. Um, so imagine just what that means for the average Ghanaian. Everything's just very expensive. Fuel is expensive. Food is expensive. Um, I think it's just important to not look at anything, any country, through the rose-colored glasses and just have a realistic sense of like, okay, what is it like to actually live and work in Ghana for the average Ghanaian and not just, you know, the privileged expats or the privileged diasporans who get to, you know, just hop in and out. With all of that said, I would say Ghana is definitely worth the hype. I had a phenomenal time there, and I'm going to go ahead and share some of my first impressions of Ghana, um, some of my favorite experiences, and just the highlights of the months that I spent there. So working in Ghana was pretty amazing. I was working with emerging public leaders an organization creating a new generation of public servants committed to social impact. I was working to support comms and alumni engagement. So what the program does is place recent university graduates into different civil service positions. They are placed in those positions as fellows of emerging public leaders, and they get a lot of support to essentially kick off their careers as public servants. So it was a very interesting and just really like eye-opening experience for me. A lot of the fellows that were placed in different government ministries were just a few years younger than me. Um, so just like early 20s, they were super energized about serving their country, contributing to Ghana's development, and getting to do like actual like real impactful work um, at the various ministries that they were placed at. I'll be sure to include a link to their website in the show notes so you can learn more about the work that they do. They also have a presence in Kenya and Liberia and the big goal is to build a Pan-African network of fellows doing really impactful work and and given my interests and passions, there was just so much alignment with the work that I was doing. So um, needless to say, I really enjoyed getting to see what engaging young people in like policy making like actually looks like involving young people in, you know, various decision making processes like seeing what that actually takes um, and how difficult it can be at times, but then also like how feasible it is, um, especially through like super deliberate and intentional programs like the program that I was working to support. So I got to do some really awesome work with really awesome colleagues. And this was actually my first time back in an office, like since you know, COVID first hit back in like March 2020. And so I definitely missed being able to 
interact with colleagues, you know, in person. I miss getting dressed up to go to work. Um, so I was thankful to experience that again. And luckily, we had a hybrid schedule. And so I didn't have to be in the office every single day. I was very thankful for that just because the transition from like working remotely full time to like going to the office every day was going to be, I think, a lot for me. And so the hybrid schedule actually gave me even more time to explore Accra. I got to work from different coffee shops. I really, really loved working from and just hanging out in Osu. And so getting to yeah work from there was really awesome. And interesting enough, my food and coffee was paid for about 50% of the time just because, you know, there'd be some professional African man in, you know, his 50s that would, um, yeah, just choose to cover my bill and, you know, maybe slip his phone number to a waiter. Um, That happened quite a bit and I was very surprised just because that pretty much never happens um, when I'm at coffee shops in the U.S. And so there's very much you know, that, that culture of, you know, like older men, you know, not having any sort of problem approaching younger women. It did get awkward at times, but it's one of those situations where you feel like you just have to say yes to avoid offending anybody or like ruffling any feathers. Um, So in those moments, I would definitely just take my feminist hat off and, you know, just say thank you. Um, It did feel great, though, to be in spaces with other African professionals, you know, doing business, working remotely. Um, I would often, like, overhear entrepreneurs maybe pitching their ideas to investors. And I guess I just learned that I feel just the most energized in those type of spaces. Inspiring me to relocate, actually, I am definitely not getting that where I currently live in San Antonio, Texas. And so I am currently aiming to move to the East Coast. The DMV area is the goal, maybe New York. If you live in a particular city that kind of fits that vibe I just described, feel free to reach out, DM me on Instagram, and let me know what you love about the city that you live in. Another highlight of my time in Accra was absolutely visiting different chop bars and having some of the most delicious food. Chop bars are local food joints that serve meals in traditional earthenware bowls and you eat the food right there in the restaurant it's made fresh every day and I just was blown away Um, each time I went to a chop bar I loved the experience and just how like just how like authentic it was and and how packed they would be like just seeing people from all walks of life just super excited about eating like local Ghanaian dishes. Um, That was everything. Palm nut soup was my favorite. It's definitely top tier. I would order it with all sorts of things. Goat, beef, chicken, fish, you name it. And of course, I'd have it with fufu. And pro tip for the best experience, you definitely want to go to chop bars early all the food is made fresh early in the morning and so you're more likely to actually find what you're in the mood for if you go there earlier in the day if you go there later in the afternoon like I would try to do you run the risk of ordering something getting really excited about it and then having your waiter come back to let you know that they're out of whatever you just ordered so yeah just a tip go early If you're a foodie like me, you would definitely enjoy Accra. 
There are food stands like everywhere you go. You typically don't have to walk too far to find, you know, folks selling coconuts, folks selling jollof, you know, folks selling wache and, you know, other traditional dishes. So definitely, definitely recommend visiting Accra and immersing yourself in the food scene. And if you prefer, you know, the more elevated or bougie joints, there's plenty of options, um, especially in like the Osu area. Um, There are a number of restaurants that I also got to visit that um, were just like, again, top tier, just really excellent food. So the food scene was an absolute highlight. Lastly, everyone was just so nice. Like, I felt at home as soon as I got to Ghana. Both of the times I was in Ghana, I just felt like everybody was, you know, looking out for me. Um, Everyone was just really kind and helpful. And it was very nice knowing that, you know, as a Zambian American, I could travel there and, you know, find my way around. Um, feel safe and blend right in in most situations. People are also very polite in Ghana and everywhere you go you hear the word please. Um, That's just a common thing people say before you know asking for something so you don't necessarily hear excuse me you hear more like please and in tree which is widely spoken in Accra um, the word um, or the expression mepacho means please. And so I found myself actually saying please after like a lot of stuff or before I asked for things or, you know, asked for directions. Um, and so I do recommend learning um, a few phrases if you are going to be traveling to Ghana just so you, you know, can respectfully address folks or ask for things. Um, because one thing I did learn is that although people are very polite, they will politely and respectfully tell you about yourself. Um, and so do not mistake the kindness that you receive for any sort of weakness. Thanks again for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the episode. If there's anything in particular you want me to dive deeper into in maybe a future episode, feel free to DM me. I am open to your thoughts and suggestions and share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it. I know there are lots of folks planning to go to Ghana this December. If you know someone that just needs a nice little overview of Ghana and what to expect when they travel there, be sure to forward them this episode. A quick reminder, new episodes of the show are out every two weeks now, so be on the lookout for the next episode, which is going to feature a really cool founder I actually met while I was in Ghana. He is the co-founder of Daba, a new way to invest in Africa, so I think y'all are really going to enjoy that episode. Before you go, be sure to rate the show and leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It really helps validate that Dear Diaspora content is great and that the podcast is worth a listen. So thanks to everybody that's left a review so far and given the show 4.8 stars on Apple Podcasts. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, give Dear Diaspora a follow on Instagram at Dear Diaspora and join the podcast mailing list. All the links to do so are in the episode show notes, so check those out. Thanks again, and talk to you soon.